Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the show. It's time to go to Sonny the Paddock Judge, and he's got a special guest with him this week. It's trainer Peter Tritton. Let's watch. Thanks, guys. I'm here today with Peter Tritton from Australia. Peter, tell us a little bit about your stock. I see you get most of your horses from down under. Tell us about uh, why, why is that? Well, I'm probably more used to the horses down there, and I know what trainers to get them off. And uh, I've got a lot of buddies at home, and when horses get on their mark down there, I, um, they come up for sale, and I can, I've got a lot of friends I can talk to and try and get the best horse I can. And um, so I, I tend to stick with them more because I know more about them. And when a horse comes up here, how long does it take for them to adjust to uh, all that traveling and racing over here? I'm sure it's different styles. Well, all horses are different. I, I usually take about four to five weeks to qualify them. Depends what time of year they come, but um, most of them adapt pretty good as long as I... I don't spell them when I get them. I work them straight away, but I just get them used to the farm and used to the way we do things over here, and um, they just more or less tell me when they're ready. The expense of bringing a horse over here, it isn't cheap. Tell us how much it costs. Uh, about 13,000 American to fly one over. Yeah, you know, I, I, I found it's best to fly them all the way to New York. Um, you can truck them over America, but it takes too much out of the horses. Thank you, Peter, and best of luck to you in the future. I'm Sonny the Paddock Judge. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sonny. It's time now to bring on the coach, the man who makes the picks, <laughs> make you a lot of money. And coach, let's get right to it. What are you looking for this week? Well, first, let me tell you, we did deliver the goods last week. We had five winners in our six selections. And, but we can't uh, harp on the past. No, we can't good harp stuff, on the past, stuff. but we're on a little bit of a roll. Okay, good. A uh, big race car tonight uh, at, Mo at Mohawk and this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, so before we get to that, let's give a couple of quick shout-outs to uh, Sarah in Morristown, huge fan, big Steve Ross fan. Hi, Hi how Sarah. are you? Uh, to Nick and Laurie here at Harris on the racing floor. Uh, they dispense beverages here, and it's also Laurie's birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Laurie. And Keep pouring those drinks. And lastly, <laughs> to the Dukes Lacrosse Club, going for their fourth national championship this weekend down in Baltimore. Good luck to the Blue Devils. Um, let's go right to Mohawk tonight for our uh, first pick with the Dukes pick. Uh, race number two, the Canadian Breeders' Final. We're going with number three, Not Enough, with Tim Teacher. Oh, like, he's new on the horse, like right? Like him a lot. New drive, okay. Like him a lot. Okay. Uh, Philly's pick, uh, we're going to the Meadowlands tonight. Two picks. Race five and the Tarport Hap uh, three-year-old fillies. Number eight, Ginger and Fred with Dave Pallone, who we just talked about. This horse uh, won a lifetime mark last time is razor sharp. That horse can dance, too. She sure can. <laughs> and race number ten, uh, number one, Yellow Diamond with Jim Morelli. Followed uh, this horse to the Meadowlands, like her a lot. Okay. Uh, in our People's Choice pick, we're going to Cal Expo tonight. Race number ten, number seven, Machine Maker. Horse is razor sharp, dropping a little, doesn't have to contend with split ticket tonight, so I like him a lot. And let's go to our Harris pick. Um, I guess we're going to have to collect at a different bank because even though Foiled again ran a huge race, I had to pick between Artificial and Mr. Big, and I went with Artificial. I think that the race is going to be run out on the front end. Horse won a monster mile. I like him a lot. Okay, we'll have to see what happens. Thank you, Coach. Coach E.B. Helm. And, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to go to our blast in the past to look at one of Harness Racing's terrific races from its yesteryear. Let's watch. Eight of the finest and fastest three-year-old pacers in the sport. Get ready for one of the high spots in the early racing season, the $100,000 Battle of the Brandywine. The world's foremost race caller, Proximity Award winner Roy Shutt, describes the 20th renewal of the Battle of the Brandywine. There they go. It's a great start. Breaking Point gets away on top. It's Breaking Point. Scarlet Skipper's right there. Second hot hitter is third. Sun Sam is flying up on the outside. Sun Sam won 14 of 17 races as a two-year-old, banking over $246,000. He was syndicated late during his two-year-old season by Wall Street executive and horseman Louis Gaida for a reported record high $6 million of which breeder Barry Epstein retained a portion. The sire of Sun Sam, Albatross. His dam, the Brett Hanover Stakes winner, Princess Sam. In Sun Sam's first 20 races, he has only been farther back than second once. On the outside, Sun Sam under a drive. 
Mostest Yankee coming on the outside. Here comes Hot Hitter on the outside, and he is flying. Sun Sam on the front end. Breaking Point is coming to him. Sun Sam and Breaking Point. Sun Sam stays in there. Wow, another serious blast from the past. I love going back in time. Isn't that great? It is. Was it, it is, as good for you as it was for me? Yes, I think so. Okay, Monday's 10th at Harris Chester was the feature. A $38,000 open handicap trot. Lots of trots on this, mm -hmm. on this show this week. But I love trotters. Okay. Yeah. And it's named for a terrific trotter named Flurth. Remember Flurth? I don't. You don't? No. I'm not talking about the lift either. I just like Flurth. Okay. Lanson with Mike Lachance was the 9 to 5 chalk. Beach Nut Brand 7 to 2 with Tietrich. Lolique Zifonchos was 4 to 1 third choice with Tim Curtin. Here's James with the call. And it's Lanson, his lead dwindling to a neck. Sunland Dakota is up at the leader's throat latch. And Spam Spade made a break in stride. Beach Nut Brand awaits the open stretch. Low leaks in the clear, but still four from the front. 150 to go. And Lanson is traveling well. Lanson, Sunland Dakota drifting out, but still giving chase. Beach Nut Brand, the inside. Lanson wins. Well, Lanson grabbed the lead just past the quarter and rolled on from there, winning by one in 153 and two. Sunland Dakota, a 44 to one space invader with Double D, Dan Dubay, outphotoed Beach Nut Brand for the belly. And now we go up to Mohegan Sun Pocono Downs. Another Pennsylvania Sire Stake race. It was number 13 on the card. Pleasing Lady, which is a quality I like in a woman, with Mike Lachance was 3 to 5. Rusty Centerfold was 5 to 1 with Kevin Sizer. Well, in the end, Pleasing Lady aimed to and did, winning in 156 flat. C. Raven was second. Rusty Centerfold was third. And when we come back, we're going to go around the oval up to the Meadowlands for their signature event, the $1 million Meadowlands Space. It was a goodie. You want to see it. Stay right there. So a chase and race into the top, the quarter in 26 and 1. Hello there, you, and welcome back to PA Harness Week. And as promised, we are going around the oval. And I'm so excited about this. Wow. Wow. I'm pretty psyched about this race. I know you are. It's the Meadowlands Pace, $1 million, the best three-year-olds in the world. Paces, mind you. Well said was the 2-5 to five chalk of Pierce off his North American Cup win. Right. Hypnotic Blue Chip with Tietrich and Art Colony with John Campbell were co-second choices at 6-1. to one. And here's that call. Art Colony takes the lead, and here comes the favorite. Well said, just floating up on the outside, up to the leader's wheel. He's racing in second. Chase and racing now back in third. Hypnotic Blue Chip on the outside, and Well Said clears Art Colony, the half in 53 and 4, so Well Said leads them as they move on to the far turn, the whip up on Art Colony is two lengths away, second, Hypnotic Blue Chip is left first over on the outside, Chase and Racing is shuffled back, Vintage Master riding cover toward the outside, as they circle the far turn, and Well Said is accelerating away, it's Well Said who kicks out to a four length lead, and Well Said dominating the pace field at the top of the stretch, 120 and 2, the three quarter time. Hypnotic Blue Chip is second. Art Colony on the inside third. Vintage Master fourth on the outside. Chase and Racing behind horses. Well said under a hand drive with an eighth of a mile to go. Vintage Master is six lengths from him racing in second. If I can dream up into third, but it's well said. A powerful and dominating Meadowlands pace winner. Well said was just a freaking monster. He wins by six open lengths in 147 and three. The second fastest Meadowlands pace ever. Ron Pierce drove the winner last year, as you mentioned, artificial, yeah. went in 147 and two, and he upset some beats somewhere. Vintage Master with Dubay was second. Oddly enough, they were one two in their debuts almost a year to the day before that. Is that wild? 38 to one, if I can dream, was third for the minister or the prime minister of speed, George Brennan. And we are out of time. Just a reminder, uh, tomorrow, right here, Harris Chester, a terrific race. It's going to be the final of the Ben Franklin. A half a million bucks in the line. Who is going to win? We'll have to find out. And for Heather Moffat, I'm Steve Ross. Have yourself a terrific day. Until next week, take care.